Welcome to Jets Talk. My name is Ryan. I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, we're talking a little joint practice action with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the New York Jets. We're supposed to have two joint practices. They canceled or two open to the fans, I guess. They canceled the one for tomorrow. I'm still going to that practice, but it's just not going to be a joint practice. I'll be there with O'Leary, Green Bean, Ali, Richie. It's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure if you are going to go to that practice, let us know. But I want to get into a few of the highlights that came out from today's practice. Lowlights, highlights, basically everything. Robert Sala, Aaron Rodgers, Dalvin Cook, a whole lot of stuff going on today. Uh, but overall, the starting offensive line was really the big concern for a lot of people. And it's been the big concern literally since last year. Uh, but today we got to see Turner at left tackle, Tittman at left guard. That's the first time we got to see him there. McGovern was in at center, Schweitzer at right guard, and Mitchell at right tackle. And I think when you look at this offensive line and you see all the pressures that were constantly given up, I think Aaron Rodgers at one point was sacked six times within a 10-play stretch. So, look, I, I understand the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive line is really good, but I don't care. I don't want to see this much pressure coming up our quarterback's face week in and week out because it seems like this is going to be a constant issue. We saw it in Carolina. Again, they have some good edge rushers as well. But I don't get the warm and fuzzies when I'm looking at this offensive line right now. But I'm not going to get overly critical about it because this is not what the starting offensive line is likely going to look like. Robert Sala addressed this after practice. You know, like I said, uh, as a coach, you want it done yesterday. But at the same time, individually, we have a lot of faith in the guys that we have. But just trying to find the right combination. And if it takes us up the game day, it takes us up the game day. But uh, um, we're going to keep pushing. Uh, I know our players are working. It, it's very important to them. And uh a um, lot of faith, like I said, in the individual players we have competing. That hasn't changed. It's just a matter of finding the right combination of guys and, and uh, going out there and getting working together. Trying to find the right combination of guys, but having confidence in the guys you have in the building, that's a whole lot of coach speak for saying, I still have no idea what the starting offensive line is going to end up looking like. We were hoping to have that in place by the Carolina game this past Saturday, but now you're kind of stretching it in. There's a little bit of injuries going on with Lake and Tomlinson. AVT's out a little bit. And I think you're you know, obviously still waiting for Dwayne Brown to come back. So there's just a lot of uncertainty on this offensive line. And I think one of the big things that winds up coming up a lot is what's going on with Makai Becton. When we see him out there on the field, whether it be in practice or in games, the reps that he's getting are really good. Like he's throwing dudes around. We would like to see him in some first team reps, but we have yet to see that. And we haven't seen him on the left hand side or we've seen him on the left hand side. We haven't seen him on the right hand side, which is where a lot of fans are kind of projecting him to be when Dwayne Brown eventually does come back. Robert Sala addressed Makai Becton and his usage after practice. No, that's, that's a fair question. And Makai and I have talked about it. You know, it's the biggest thing for Makai is to show that he can play a game right without having to uh, be spelled out and take a break and all that stuff. And uh, so it's and. So it's unfair to the team to prepare a guy to start if you're not sure if he can make it through a game. So he is moving in the right direction. Um, he, had, like I said, I thought he had a big step against Carolina uh, in that game, and um, and he's doing a really nice job competing. And he's every day he's pushing himself to do a little bit more and more to prove that he can be out there for a full game. And and as soon as, as a staff, training staff, and everyone feels comfortable that he's able to show that and and stack days up. Uh, we'll definitely start rotating them in to compete. When you see some of the struggles that maybe some of the other guys are having up front, does it expedite the process where yeah, if you want to see him play a game, it's not fair to the other guys, but also it's like, okay, we need to see if the talent can do it. He can do it. It's just a matter of being available. And so as soon as he shows that he can be available, it, everyone knows he can do it. Robert, what about giving him reps at right, put on the right side to Robert? Which yeah, that he, so he gets, you know, for sure, he gets all his reps on the right side during walkthrough and all that. So he's being he's being worked that way. And so we're hoping to get him some right tackle reps here, uh, some live ones um, starting tomorrow. I think Makai Becton should get some starter reps. And it's nice that we're going to get to see him probably tomorrow is what it seems like at the right hand side, at right tackle with the starting lineup. And you saw during hard knocks, Makai Becton and Aaron Rodgers having that little heart to heart. I shouldn't say heart to heart, but that little conversation on the sideline where Makai Becton says, hey, I want to protect you. And Aaron Rodgers says, hey, let's go grab lunch. Let's talk about some things. I think there's probably more to what Rodgers may want to say to Makai and kind of figure that whole side of things out. Maybe they dive deeper into that in a later Hard Knocks episode. I really want to see what's going on with the inner workings of Makai Becton. But by and large, he's been our most dominant offensive lineman. And I think when I'm looking at the outlook of where I want this line to be week one, I'm hoping we're going to get Dwayne Brown, left tackle, Lake and Tomlinson, left guard, Tipman, hopefully, maybe at center, him or McGovern. I'm kind of, you know, either way I'm, I'm comfortable with. 
AVT at right guard, and then hopefully Makai Becton can slot in at right tackle. I think that would be putting our best five offensive linemen out in front of Rodgers, and I, you got to have it. I mean, we have had so many bad offensive uh, line plays where you're just seeing Rodgers get sacked or you know running for his life and you know snaps going over his head. Like Literally, the offensive line has been the bane of our existence this entire offseason. Next, I want to talk a little bit about some of the no-look passes that we were getting from Aaron Rodgers and Zach Wilson. Kind of nice to see. Which one did it better? I'll let you guys leave the comments down below which one you thought was better. I'm going to lean with Rodgers because it's going to Garrett Wilson, obviously. Um, but either way, I love seeing big brother and little brother playing. You know, who can do it better? It's nice to see this sort of chemistry continue on, and I don't want to see them you know, try this stuff in a live game. <laughs> you know, it's nice to see them do it in practice, but I want you to like, st I don't know, maybe I do want them to see it. I want to see them execute it perfectly in a real game. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see any of this like, oh, no look pass and then straight to the, you know, the defender and then it goes back for six. Don't want to see that. Uh, defensive back coach Tony Oden got carted off. Apparently he, he caught some friendly fire, I think is what Salah said. I don't know if that was a punch or you just got tackled or whatever it was, but he collapsed on the sideline, wound up going to the hospital. I think he's all right from everything that I've heard. Uh, we didn't see Carl Lawson or Corey Davis today. There were a lot of fights in practice, lots of fights. This was a very, very chippy practice. I'm pretty glad that this is only going to be a one day sort of event and you're not going to have potentially injuries and things like that. I remember Damian Woody wound up getting hurt. I think he hurt his hand in a joint practice because he was fighting and he was being stupid about it. There's no point in fighting during practice. It's not going to help anyone out. You're not going to be able to do that during a game. So don't even bother doing it. Russell Gage, wide receiver for the Bucks, out for the year, torn LCL, I believe, I think is what it was. Um, so overall, not like great from a practice perspective. We did get a really nice Aaron Rodgers to Garrett Wilson reception, perfectly placed. This was seven on sevens early on in practice, and then it probably went a little more downhill from that point on because you didn't have the offensive line to to stand in front of you but at least at seven and seven you're not worrying about like a pass rush or any of those sorts of things now as far as everything else going on around the new york jets dalvin cook officially signs with the jets today we saw him fly in to what is it morristown airport right there and you saw pictures of him getting onto the plane or getting off the plane with hard knocks right there everyone is paying attention to dalvin cook and how this is all going to play out Aaron Rodgers was asked about Dalvin Cook, and here's what he had to say. Done. Dalvin's got it done for a long time at a high level. He's motivated. Uh, he wants to uh, win a championship. Obviously, he made it well known to me during the process. He wanted to play with me and play here in, in Jersey. So we're excited to have him. Um, excited to get him in here. He's got a uh, little one on the way, so he won't be, uh, I don't think, be with us uh, maybe until next week. Uh, maybe I wasn't supposed to say that. but. I can say that? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, <laughs> go ahead. Did it require uh, some recruiting on your part? Did you? Honestly, not much. No, he wanted to be here. Uh, listen, there's always the money component, which it's a business. I respect it. And he was going to, you know, look into the uh, opportunities. But at the end of the day, if the money was close, uh, he was telling me that he was going to be here. It is kind of nice that Aaron Rodgers didn't have to recruit Dalvin Cook overly hard. Dalvin Cook let it known, let it be known early in the process that he wanted to play with Rodgers in New Jersey, and that's where he ultimately wanted to end up. We saw where we heard all those rumors coming out, but I just sort of assumed like Miami was eventually where this guy was going to end up. So to hear him want to be here is kind of nice. I wanted him to want to be here. I didn't want to have to go out and overpay for a player that I felt like would have just been adding to a strength in our in our you know, on our roster already. That running back room is loaded now with Dalvin Cook. You're talking like elite wide receiver or running back one-two punch. I don't know if there's a better one in the NFL right now. Dalvin Cook had a little bit to say after signing his contract to the New York Jet fans. Jet Nation, DC is in the building and I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be a part of something special. Let's get this thing rolling. You know, gang green, let's go. Dalvin Cook is in the building. We're going to get to see him next week. He's got the birth of his first child coming this weekend, roughly, or coming in, in the next couple of days. He's got a, I guess, what is a shoulder surgery that he had back at the end of the season. So he's still kind of rehabbing from that. He's going to be ready, I think they said, next week in terms of practice. 
I don't care when he gets on the field. Running back is one of those positions that you're able to kind of translate really easily from one offense to another offense. And you kind of see that with like college running backs coming in for NFL backs. And hopefully he's still got a ton of gas left in the tank. Remember, we're not asking this dude to be the number one running back and bell cow. We're asking him to share reps with our bell cow, Brees Hall. And they're going to keep both their legs fresh and they're going to stay healthier longer into the season. So I think this is going to be really, really important to see. Guys, let me know your thoughts of today's practice down below in the comment section. What did you think of Dalvin Cook? What do you think about the offensive line? What are our best offensive linemen? Who are the best five to put out in front of Aaron Rodgers? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, go Jets. J-E-T-S!